On Monday, Republican New York gubernatorial candidate Lee Zeldin received an unusual endorsement, that of the New Era Democrats Political Club in Brooklyn. Citing issues of public safety and quality of life, the Democratic Club, which previously backed progressive Mayor Bill de Blasio, threw its support behind the Republican House representative. Zeldin has made public safety a key part of his campaign against incumbent Democratic Governor Kathy Hochul. He has blasted the defund the police movement and has Allison Esposito, a former NYPD officer, as his running mate. Hochul has made combating gun violence a major priority since taking office, especially following the racist mass shooting at a Buffalo supermarket. Uh, everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, I know it's a Monday, the week before the end of the summer. Uh, sorry to see the summer go. It's been a great summer. In about a week, we're going to be ready to go in a very important and, uh, we hope, a very positive campaign. I'm John Orlando. I'm the president of New Era Democrats, Ned. And I was, we started back in 1982, Mary Sansone, or Ralph Sansone, her son, got involved in a governor's race that is a people. And that, um, that, believe it or not, was Mario Cuomo's campaign. His first his campaign he won, he beat the Koch machine at that time, and he became governor of New York State as a, as a non-machine candidate. We find ourselves in a similar situation, uh, but that was 40 years ago, almost 40 years ago, uh, exactly 40 years ago. But what we find is a very similar situation. But over those 40 years, that organization grew from those young people that got involved in the Cuomo campaign, and they've gone on, they've had their own kids, and we've migrated out of Brooklyn. It was started in the basement of Mary's basement in Brooklyn. We've migrated out of that. We have people, uh, we still have our networks out in Nassau, Staten Island, Queens, uh, upstate. Uh, so we're all still friends. We all still keep in touch. And now it's time to activate that network and really, really get them going. Because it's not just a New York City problem, it's a New York State problem. Uh, so first I'm going to invite Celia, our Executive Vice President, to say a few things. Uh, and get her thoughts on the race and what's going on. Hi, I'm a native New Yorker. I've been here all my life. Born and raised in Brooklyn, Staten Island right now. I see myself what is happening. And it, I'm very scared. I'm scared for us, our people, our children, our families. I'm an associate real estate broker. That's what my profession is. I see all the commercial space, a lot of empty spaces. I see all the retail, there's issues. Offices are not being rented. We're in a major problem going on right now in New York City, New York State. But more importantly, also, three, oh, approximately 350,000 people have left New York. This is scary. I'm very involved with the community, all sorts of community pro projects and things and programs, very involved. What I see happening since COVID and everything that happened, that addiction has been put on the side. COVID, addiction, the programs, we're not having the right staffing for the programs, we're losing kids, family members, spouses, children to the addiction, the fence, well, everything that's happening. We need to take a, grip, grip, a grasp on this and try to take, get control back to what's going on in our state, our city. We need somebody that has some strength that we have to bring power back to us to help our families, our children. Everybody has somebody involved with addiction, depression. It was put on the wayside. We can't do this any longer. We have to take control. This is why I believe in him. I want him to be our next governor. I am passionate about <laughs> President of New York Democrats, Ned, uh, Peter Arbini, a lot of you may know him, a lot of his friends are here. Uh, he's also become an activist. And people don't know him like I know him for the past 20, 25 years in the sense that he's always been politically savvy. He's always been involved in the politics. Uh, unfortunately, COVID, made him an activist in another way, the COVID nursing homes. And his issue has become our issue as a family, as a Ned family. We're behind him 110%. We're gonna be there for him for whatever he needs. And uh, we wanna, you know, and he has a close grasp of the issue of what happened and what's going on. And uh, he's behind Lee and I want him to say a few words. So. See you again. It's my brother Danny who's always on TV with me. So I gotta have him here. He's always late, so. <laughs> At least he's consistent. What is inconsistency? Uh, Ned is a group of people that are comprised of Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. That's why I feel comfortable in this group for 20, 25 years. We vote on things. We met with Lee. The body voted. 
and they want to support Lee. So we're all supporting Lee now. Um, we had met him some time ago, and basically what came out of it is if you feel safe in New York City or New York State, you need to vote for Hope. If you don't feel safe, you need to vote for change. And he offers change. He offers the leadership that I have. And I realize that there has to be change. There has to be new thinking. So what can we say? We're in another situation where we have a, uh, a democratic machine that has gone far left, uh, too extreme for even those moderate Democrats, the people that you see in this room, the people that are really uh, want to see positive. It's, it's when the mayor of your largest locality is a Democrat and he's telling you you need to change the law and you're not changing the law, something has to give. But let's be specific. The incident in the Bronx. A man gets sucker punched and is in a coma. Where's our humanity? He was on parole. So that's another issue that we all should be aware of. Why was his parole not automatically keeping him in jail? Was it, why was it an automatic violation? So we created another bureaucratic level in our court system, which is already overcrowded, which is already slow, which is already behind. We created another bureaucratic level in our court system to create hearings to try to keep people in jail who should not be let out of jail anyway. Yes, we all could agree. People, some Republicans, invite some Republicans, invite prosecutors, invite law enforcement to have that conversation. I guarantee you we would have came up with some solutions. Doesn't see what's in front of us. It's a shame. There has to be a change. Public safety has to be number one. Second thing is, one of the reasons that we all want to get behind Lee, let's look at the MTA as an example. Everybody go home and look at your gas bills. We've been paying a surcharge. Look at the taxi drivers and the protests they had the other day. It's going to just cripple their industry, which is already being crippled. Let's, let's talk about those. No economy can recover by taxing, by taxing the people. No economy can ever recover. Name the economy that recovered by taxing the people. That's just not happening. That can't happen. MTA, surcharge, it has a management problem. They work a 40-hour work week. They make $600. That's, again, not what we, the small businesses, again, we're just in the last 20 years. What is that telling you? To Celia's point, 350,000 people, right? Peter, Democrats mismanaged the, the COVID response. They try to cover it up and hide it, but it's been proven, again, they mismanaged it. They made some bad decisions. So what do we need? We need a, a gentleman, right? We need a man who's willing to work with people. Um, he wants to include more people in the conversation with dissension or just in people that disagree with us to move out of the state. That's a terrible response. This gentleman here, Lee Zeldin, a state senator, a congressman, a family man. That's what we need. Someone who's concerned about their daughters. He's out in the streets. He's working hard. And we're proud to give our endorsement to Lee Zeldin. Lee, you're the best. really concerned right now about the direction of our city and our state. It's been an honor to earn the support of New York to save this city and to save this state. It is based on how bipartisan they are. And the last year that came out, I was ranked 19 out of 435. The year before that was 12. We can all, disagreement is okay. If you have a criticism about your government, we actually vocal about what they're passionate about. There are a lot of Democrats who are here. It's now Governor Hochul was giving, I kind of took her advice a bit the next day. I got in my car and I went to Florida, New York. Got the endorsement of the mayor of Florida, New York. And campaigned with the mayor of Florida, New York. But I'm not going anywhere. I'm duty in the Army. And this is my home. This is where I'm raised. Some of my families in Florida, some in South Carolina, do still have relatives here in New York as well. But this is a story that so many of us as New Yorkers can tell of people in our family, friends, neighbors, who have hit their breaking point and decided to leave this state. I've challenged Kathy Hochul to complete this sentence, which I think would be informative for her. It would be instructive for her 
And I am confident that this is a sentence that you all would be able to easily complete on your own. New York leads the entire nation in population loss because. If you want to be the governor of the state of New York, you need to be willing to be the governor for all New Yorkers. And if you want to tackle the reality that we lead the entire country in population loss, you have to understand why. People are leaving the state because they feel like their wallets are under attack, their safety, their freedom, the quality of education, our schools, and they are making the most personal decision to leave a state that they've always called home, a state that they once believed was the greatest state of the greatest country in the history of the world. And they've actually hit the point where they've decided that their American dream is no longer also a New York dream. Jose Alba came from the Dominican Republic to New York, was living a law-abiding life, hard-working, becomes a bodega worker and forced into a decision where a self-defense call is made where somebody loses their life and I don't think Jose Alba had any other chance. He had no other option. I visited the bodega. It actually looks smaller, that space where he was cornered. It looks even smaller when you go there in person. Alvin Bragg ends up slapping him with a murder charge, sends him to Rikers Island with an open stab wound, asks for hundreds of thousands of dollars in bail. The person who stabbed Jose Alba wasn't charged with anything. It was because of public outcry that the murder charge ends up getting dropped. Thank God the entire incident takes place over the surveillance camera. Or who knows, maybe Jose... He decided to go back to the Dominican Republic. His American dream was over. His New York dream was over. He feared for his safety so he's going back to the Dominican Republic. New York leads the entire nation in population loss. And we need a governor who understands that, who understands why that is, and is willing to do something about it. I say let's repeal cashless bail, give judges discretion to weigh dangerousness and other factors. Kathy Hochul says there's no data. I say that we should remove Alvin Bragg Kathy Hochul says he just got there, cut him some slack, he's doing his job. I was saying let's drop the murder charge against Jose Alba. Kathy Hochul was saying it was a local matter, she's not going to get involved. Now we all could agree that if someone is charged with a low level offense, clean record, not a flight risk, not believed to be a danger, and the only reason why they would have to stay behind bars is because they couldn't afford $100 in bail. We're all on the same page already on that. That's why judges should have discretion. But last month, two Mexican cartel drug smugglers were busted in Inwood with $1.2 million worth of crystal meth. I don't care what your best argument is for cashless bail. Because probably that best argument is one that we're all on the same page on. But if you are busted with $1.2 million worth of crystal meth and you can't afford bail, that's on you. You're a bad criminal. You're a bad drug dealer. You're a bad businessman. Right. <laughs> well, what exemptions do you support? A total exemption. Everybody should be exempt. <laughs> London, you've had traffic end up getting dropped onto all different kinds of streets because of congestion. Side streets in Brooklyn and Queens are going to be more congestion, congested as people find new ways to get themselves into the city. You want more people to travel on the New York City subway? It was pointed out before I started speaking. If people feel safe on the subway, they will ride the subway. There should be more law enforcement, better lighting, it should be cleaner. People shouldn't be loitering there if they're not 
actively utilizing the service, they shouldn't even be down there. You want more people being able to ride the subway? Well, when they feel like they can do it without hugging a pole or grabbing their breaking point estate because they're struggling to afford to survive in New York, and now they're not putting us in time out as a state. They're gone. They're not just going down there for a few months. These are permanent decisions that are being made every single day. Kathy Hochul says, well, we'll see in January about cashless bail. No, people want to know right now. We've seen this from one issue to the challenge Kathy Hochul to at least five debates. The first two debates that came up, CBS 2 put in a request and PIX 11. And I accepted both requests. I believe that we should have at least two televised debates here in the New York City media market. We should have a, at least one debate in the Buffalo or Rochester media market. We should have one in the Capital Region media market. And we should have at least one in, the media, in all the other media markets. And I'd be willing to do a debate in every media market. I also believe that they need to take place at least two prior to the start of absentee voting. And at least three should take place prior to the start of early voting. Kathy Hochul has not yet accepted any debate request. And if you ask her, she'll give you, oh yeah, we'll have a debate, this generalized statement. No, it's time to schedule this now because absentee voting is about to start in the next few weeks. Is this a game? You're not willing to acknowledge why people are leaving the state. People are asking you what your positions are on the issues that matter most to them. You won't talk about it and you're telling us that we have to elect you to find out what you stand for. And every single day, more people are becoming victims of crime. People who had the entrepreneurial spirit, started their business here in New York, have decided, you know what, that's it, and they're gone. If the business can leave, they're leaving. People feel like their money will go further, they will feel safer, they will live life freer somewhere else. Now is the time. Every single day, every minute matters. So what we have here is Republicans, Democrats, some independents, and we, most importantly as New Yorkers, need to unify right now and do absolutely everything in our power to tell everyone we know taking nothing for granted. There's a long history of New Era Democrats getting Democrats elected. But it wasn't about New Era Democrats getting Democrats elected because you're trying to be partisan Democrats. No. It was because we all have our passions. We all have our beliefs. There were races for different offices over the course of the years where you decided enough was enough and at that moment you had to go all in to save a city and a state. Well, maybe that, that moment isn't any more important than what it is right now. And I want to work with all of you. I want to work with all of you. And even if there was somebody who wasn't here and they don't vote for me, I want to work with them too. Because if you want to be the governor of New York, you have to be willing to be the governor for all New Yorkers. Last. Silly was talking about losing too many of our young. It's not just our young boys and young girls, young men, young women. We're losing others too. When we're talking about two Mexican cartel drug smugglers and $1.2 million worth of crystal meth, these are stories that lead to the loss of life. And there was a massive settlement, pot of money, that came to New York and people who were stakeholders, who were advocates, they lost their young son or daughter due to addiction. They were honored to be asked to be part of this task force. And the state is being very secretive. They're not having their open meetings. They're not planning on what they're going to do with all this settlement money. It seems like maybe they'll be given a very small part of the pot to decide what's the best way to spend it, but the rest of it, people in power want to just make their slush funds. 
If you want to tackle fentanyl, crystal meth, heroin, this is a moment for all of us to be able to not, not win an election in order to find out where a governor stands, not wait till January. There is a task force with members right now who have a mission and they are not being empowered to be able to do their job. My daughter's turned 16 one month from today. They start 11th grade this Thursday. There are people who have buried their sons and daughters and they know that they did everything that they could. They constantly think, what else could they have done? There are great parents who are losing their sons and daughters. We could do everything right as parents and still find ourselves, God forbid, at a wake for a young child. Right now, while we are here, there are parents who are in this exact situation. And we all have to do everything in our power to combat this today. I call on this governor to get this task force operational fully today. They're there. They're ready to meet. They could be meeting tomorrow, Wednesday. Give them the entire pot of money from the settlement. Don't just give them a little bit of it because they have all of the best creative ideas of how to spend this money on treatment, on education, on rehabilitation, on education. The whole, the whole package right now and unfortunately their hands are being tied behind their back. The governor has an opportunity to do something about that today. So let's save our state. Let's make our streets safer, our subways safer. Let's restore your freedoms. Let's make sure that we are protecting and advancing upward economic mobility, not just in the areas that are doing well for people who are inheriting success from past generations, but going for, right into the, the communities where kids are trapped in multi-generational poverty, where they need that helping hand to get all kids access to a quality education. Let's make sure that New York can be a state that we can all stay here, be proud of, be able to brag about as the greatest state and the greatest country in the history of the world. This will be done through a partnership between Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, and I plan on working closely with New Era Democrats to save this city and to save this state. I thank John, Celia, Peter, all of you for your courage. Despite in the past you have gotten involved with Democratic candidates in the past, you understand what this moment calls for, and that's all of us working together to get this done and restore New York to glory. Thank you all. I'm happy to